All right, moving on. Before I get to the comments themselves, I'm going to start off by just going through a list of things that I kind of wish I was able to talk about, but for one reason or another, I either didn't think of it at the time or there just wasn't a good place in the video to talk about it. See you. So if you haven't seen the video, go check it out. I'm very proud of it. No, I'm not. I mean, yes, I am. It's complicated. It's my, fir it's my first video. It took a very long time, much longer than you guys probably would expect. But every time I watch it, I just see so many flaws. Like, I didn't upload it because it felt done. I uploaded it because it was a tumor that was stressing me out. And I thought I just needed to start this process of not having, you know, like starting to upload videos and just get over the hurdle of having my first few be really bad. And I am incredibly shocked at how positively it has been received and not even not, not even going to get into that. I'm just, I'm very grateful. Anyways. Okay, so one thing I think I should probably should have done a better job of, because I did see a lot of comments like this, is that I don't necessarily think the creators, Bryke and like the crew who made the show are, uh, as far as leftists are concerned, what we would call dirty liberals. Like, yeah, like the central conceit of the, the last two seasons, seasons is basically centrism and let's not be too... And they, and they, and they turned the thesis of the entire show into, now let's not be too extreme now. But I, I do think that they aren't quite just about upholding the status quo. Like, there's something a little bit... There's something that uh, many leftists would consider even more abhorrent. I think that they are social democrats. Like, they clearly believe in a degree of, I suppose, reform. But, I mean, look, like, their solution to the monarchy was to have Wu go through an emotional character arc and then peacefully uh, abdicate, as if that... That's, if that's a useful thing for us in terms of handling real life problems. I have I have ideas for exploring that more in a different video, uncovering Kuvira and Zaofu more in depth, but I guess that's a little uh little teaser for that. Uh I also wanted to mention that I do love how Zahir is obsessed with uh like Guru Lihima. Like that that's very much it true for like leftist spaces, like having like these lo like long dead philosophers who are like upheld and constantly like name dropped. I just I thought that was a very cute touch. Um, one thing I did I should have probably like gone into more is that like I heavily implied that there is like justification for uh Zahir basically tearing down governments, but I never really get into like why that's okay. But the inverse of Raiko having I guess the right to like prop up governments. And, like, there is an asymmetry there that I think is pretty obvious to people, but I think I should have made a little bit of room just to mention that. It's an interesting thing. Another thing is that, like, Zaheer couldn't have succeeded in toppling the societies aside from the Earth Kingdom, really. What was unique about, like, the Earth Kingdom is that it was basically upheld, like, the, the rule was upheld on coercion. Like, we also hear this about Kuvira, and that makes both their em empires very brittle, if you just remove the person at the very top, when there isn't like a whole system of people uh, within the structure that are genuinely about it. Even so, both Kuvira and uh, the Earth Queen had an, a very much like heavily implied cult of personality around them. One, one thing I wish the show had gotten ch a chance to at least acknowledge is how Zahir felt about Zaufu and the city-states more broadly, because... From what we're shown, he doesn't. He seems to only be against world leaders, but he never really comments on like more localized le representatives. Like I think we're meant to assume that he doesn't like them because otherwise, like the idea that he was too extreme doesn't work because exactly what he wanted essentially would have been the end result that we got. And like it's also interesting because like Su Yin, like while she opposed the here, she also op op opposed um the Earth Queen. I mean, sorry, uh, Kuvira to like the same degree, like. She straight up tried to assassinate Kuvira. I don't think enough people, like, acknowledge that. <laughs> like, hella based. Good for you, queen. Like, keep on slaying. The fact that Iwe's, like, basically second in command of Zaofu is also very peculiar and worthy of interest, I guess. Of course, he got yeeted out of the story with no resolution, so whatever. Oh, yeah. Also, there is a point where Kuvira... Uh, sorry. There is a point where... Uh, Korra does actually try to, like, nail Zaheer down and confront him about, you know, maybe you should just be helping, like, the Air Nomad, like, 
regrow like their base of existence and society. And Zakir basically just brushes her off and just starts rambling about more like anarchist gibberish. So like at the very least, like the idea did occur to the writers. I don't really know what to make of it, but there is a whole an element where Zahir kind of thinks that his path is spiritually ordained. He repeatedly like suggests this, which is also interesting because it seems to be separate from the notion from the existing structure of how like spirituality works in the Avatar world. Because like he is trying to essentially kill the god of their world, but he also seems to think that there's a level of like not necessarily predestination, but like destiny to what he's going to achieve. He's never actually, like, himself confronted with societal injustice in the story, like, him, amongst himself or others. Like, it's not like he sees the Earth Queen's oppression and then kills her. He just kills her, and, like, he's right. But, like, you never actually see it or see him, like, engaging with it. Same when, like, Republic City you yeet out, um, like, the Water Tribe Chief. Like, he never actually, like, examines the structures of power or, like, how they're like, oppressing people. He just kind of takes it as a given. And, like, that also kind of connects to, like, he never really talks to, actu- like, the people he's uh, supposedly liberating. And, like, the entire, uh, like, Ba Sing Se was, like, t- totally down for Earth Queen to die. But, like, he never talked to any of them before, like, murdering her. <laughs> it's not even certain that he was gonna murder her if, if like, the situation didn't, didn't just resolve in a way where that be- became uh, advantageous. Yeah, and another thing is that, like, Zaheer lies a lot, which is, like, a bit unfortunate. He lies to Ai Wei, he lies to the Earth Queen, he lies to the Air Nomads, he lies to, uh, Korra. Like, he doesn't mention how it, it, like, he doesn't tell anyone a lot of things. And I'm not saying, like, lying is, like, inherently bad or anything, but it is something that, like, 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 Korra goes out of, like, Korra makes decisions because she sees him as trustworthy for some reason, despite walking in on him, like, m- murking, uh, uh, Ai Wei. And, like, I think that comes from the fact that she saw him as someone who, like, genuinely cared about people and was trying to do the best for everyone, which is why she is just as perplexed by him not returning the Air Nomads. Could, uh, Su Yin's challenge, uh, Su Yin's, like, uh, co- co- contrast with the here is also probably why she is the one, she is the one who the narrative tasks with removing the poison from Korra, as she is basically she she is the refutation of Zahir's like extremism at least narratively, and that also is fulfilled in how she like uh, supports Korra in that situation. It's also I don't know possible that Zahir was going to free the Air Nomads after Korra was dead, but I don't think that that's implied. I don't even know what I don't know what we thought they were going to do with the Air Nomads. Honestly, there's not really any answer to that. Like, what, what What was their next step? And, like, yeah, because, like, as far as he talks about, all he thinks, like, he, he says a couple times that, like, new growth requires the destruction of the old, but he never really articulates what that new growth is going to form in or why he thinks it's going to be a good form. And, hey, like, that air nomad culture that he didn't help prop up, they did basically become, like, the world police, apparently. So that's not super great. Uh, also, I do just want to point out that it's very funny that uh, Korra ends up killing more anarchists than fascists by the time the show ends. So, hmm, there's that. <laughs> or like Korra and crew. Okay, now let's get into the actual uh, comments. Let's see, let's see. Mm-hmm. By the way, first off, just y'all have been really very nice. Uh, okay, hmm. so just kind of going in order newest okay so adam roscoe uh asked uh about what my thoughts were on anarchists can't claim moral superiority due to the fact that tyranny always follows a power vacuum and they have to ask themselves am i willing to live with the inevitable consequences that, that my actions will produce and not approach it so naively uh my next video is actually very much about cons- consequentialism and i think i think i think i think that video will help like, illustrate, I guess, like, my arguments in that front. I, I am not a huge fan of consequentialist logic for a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. And we'll get, in, we'll get into that soon. But I would like to point out that, and this is something that another uh, user uh, articulated a couple times throughout the comments. I think his name was Space. But, like, anarchism can work. Like, it, there, there are, like, like, there's this common perception that, like, it never works. But, like, it can. Like, it isn't just inevitably going to fail like there are success stories there is an argument that Zahir approached it naively again like 
I mentioned this in the video, but like, I imagine he kind of thought that he'd still be around chopping down weeds that were getting too uppity. Okay, uh, Michael, uh, Galbraith, Galbraith, uh, asked if I'd read, I've read the Kyoshi novel in the new Yangchen book. So I'm like, very, very, very poor. I, I can't afford the books. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I could. I wish I could read them. I can't. I don't have money. Uh, da, da, da. Now I'm going to flash up just some very nice comments. Like, just got so many overwhelming amount of nice comments that are just really encouraging as someone who has no idea what the hell they're doing. I, uh, there were a couple of people who asked me about other videos I've seen. And while I, I don't do this for ethical reasons or something, like I don't, it's not like I'm scared of copying people's work. I don't generally watch videos on topics that I'm interested in trying to write about because it gives me a visceral anxiety that's hard to explain. Like, I, I, it's, not, it's not that I'm afraid of copying their work, but it stresses me out to, like, listen to pe other people talk about a subject that I'm writing about. Uh, I haven't watched most of the videos that people said. I have watched the Kay and Skittle one. At least I did, like, a long time ago. I don't remember anything about it. Kay and Skittle is fantastic. They do f far phenomenal work compared to what I've been, like, what I've come out with so far. Like, love, love, love their content. Like, like their video on Citizen Sleeper and also their video on The Batman... Both just amazing, amazing. Like, yeah, they're just they're just really good, and I, I hope to be able to like uh, emulate like a modicum of like the quality that they've co they they come out with. I have been thinking about like so like one uh one one YouTuber I really like is Thought Slime, and they do this cool thing where they shout out like other creators, and I do think that that's a very valuable thing to do. So I'm gonna think about ways I can inter uh, integrate that into my own stuff. I mean, it's kind of strange because i'm tiny so there's not really smaller creators as much that i can shout out that i meaningfully i think would impact positively but i do still think the intention and the the, the access of that that is important i do want to mention i'm not even necessarily an anarchist but i do think i understand their worldview pretty well uh, ginger vlad ginger vlad had an interesting point that like while well, here isn't just a violent maniac it still kind of bothers him that they tossed anarchism in the same bucket of dangerous fringe political thought that the MCU put ecofascism into. And, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> uh, Juan, Juan Pablo Grajalas Cancico, uh, like, said something really nice, or really uh, uh, poignant, where, like, they portray radical politics intelligently, and then they shatter it, uh, to enable, like, almost entirely liberal solutions to problems. And yeah, like, they, they do. <laughs> Lima Wrench also made a good point that it's not necessarily that they, that the status quo that is protected in Legend of Korra is liberalism. It, I mean, I'm not going to make an opinion about that because I haven't really thought about it too much, but that is a good uh, thing to consider. Okay, uh, Santimonious uh, Locke made a point that I thought was really good. One of my, like, uh, one of the critiques of my video that I really think I should have, like, addressed. That, like, yeah, the Earth Queen was awful, but there was not a popular movement among the people to remove her from power. Her death was the result of a tiny group of a outside agitators, basically, who weren't even citizens of the Earth Kingdom. And there is definitely an argument that that is imposing their will on the entire kingdom. Also, I do have more videos planned on Legend of Korra, or Avatar in general. Like, I have one uh, in the pipeline on uh, homelessness, as that's a, a topic very close, uh, close to me. But I don't plan to just be like a Legend of Korra tuber. And I do, I, I do hope that y'all will like stick around and at least hear me out for my other stuff that I come up, up with. Adam Roscoe, I think we talked to you about before, that a better issue to discuss whether that you shouldn't overthrow tyrants because they could be replaced by something worse is anarchists can't claim moral superiority due to the fact that tyranny always follows a power vacuum. They have to be able to ask themselves, am I willing to live with the inevitable consequences my actions will produce and not approach it so naive naively? And like, it's not inevitable. Like, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like we do feel a bit. There is like a there is a, a la layer of like determinism in this kind of like thinking. But again, uh, I'm gonna be addressing that more another time. Sam Carlson uh, mentions that. Uh, Sam Carlson points out that Zahir never actually claimed that his goal was to create a better society. Which you might be right. Honestly, that's actually a very interesting take. That. His philosophy wasn't about creating a better better world. Like his goal was just to oppose things he didn't who he, he found unjust. 
not to create things he thought was just. I like that. That's that's worth considering. And just so we're clear, like the again, this is live, and my off the cuff like remarks on stuff isn't me like whole, like personally endorsing something as true or not. Just kind of like you know, food for thought. This comment all on the whole is pretty interesting, so I'll just leave it up if anyone wants to read it. Yeah, and like there's there's a lot of commenters here who are basically just deriding like the legend chorus death. And like again, I don't. I do think that this is an incomplete portrayal of anarchism that was done knowingly, but I don't think it's bad writing because it's and it's also not just Zahir is not a straw man, but he is an incompletely written character who is only like he's he's more post left than anarcho communist really, where like he doesn't really seem to be particularly invested in like the the struggles of the people at every level i mean he does he say like to the, like the people in bossing say that like he's doing this for them i don't know there, there's a lot of ways that you can interpret the situation jamie uh cavalier Chev chevalier uh just had a comment that made me smile where he said he was almost offended that i don't have more content out like get i, I really need to get on that shit like that that just made me smile shout out to spring roll for pointing out that uh the here is not an armchair anarchist. He he literally went out and started assassinating world leaders. Like, lol. John Kroos, Kroos uh, articulated this pretty well, which is when we are finally shown something evil about the characters, it takes the form of cartoonish villain villainy that has little to do with their actual ideas. I do think that Zhao Fu is meant to be the balanced example. Like basically, like Z Zhao Fu is attacked by both the here and Kuvira. I mean, then again, so is Republic City, but. Uh, sounds like I'm an ANCAP, but they're not anarchists, so I'm just going to move on. Donovan Smith had an interesting point where sit situations like Ozai, where it's an overwhelming force that people can't actually su successfully mount or defense against, like that is the situation that the Avatar is necessary in. And the situations that sprung up after, like during Korra's like, leave of absence, was not those situations. Which, that's fair. There's That's totally fair. Like, I can, I can, I, I see that logic. Okay, uh, here's a comment from my man Space, or I don't know their pronouns, but Space, who has, who left lots of comments that I adored uh, throughout the thread. But yeah, like some, some snippets. Uh, the reality of violence not being an evil, but rather a tool whose moral value is determined by its wielder has been acknowledged. There is no longer grounds to claim that Zuhir is immoral. On the other hand, Zuhir shows that all other uses of vi violence are immoral. The only way that you get out, out of acknowledging the avatar is institutionally unjust and that all states need to be abolished is by shifting focus from his ideals to him contradicting himself. The lens through which morality is being viewed has now shifted from Zahir fundamentally is the only person who can be called the good guy to Zahir's ideas are wrong because they could never be implemented and only cause evil through their failure. Like that's, that's a really good way of wording that. The narrative introduced a plotline that forces the viewer to come to terms with the fact that the avatar is the medium for state violence. That supposed good government would rather uh, put the literal most evil people available in charge than give up a fraction of their slice of power, and that the state needs to be abolished, and then refuses to deal with any of it, <laughs> throwing it all out because it forces the good guys who bring it to light these things to contradict himself despite him doing so making sense. Like, yeah, that's, that's just a really compelling way of like framing all that, honestly. He, he he seems to know a lot. I should probably uh, ask him some things at some point. Uh, TGR uh, Petru Ro uh, did just a regular fact check. Uh, Zahir was in prison for 13 years, not 16. The state calls its own violent law, but that of the individual crime. Look, I got I got beef with Steiner, but good quote. I do wish that Zahir at some points like got, got to interface with capitalism at all. Like he never really articulates. I mean, neither does Kuvira really, a pro or anti-capitalist front. Like, Kuvira seems to be very much about, against uh, hoarding resources, as she put it. But besides that, something I just thought about is Zir takes down the airbender's leader, leader, uh, asterisk, of Tenzin, but then is still taken down by, like, Tenzin's disciples, showing some of the strengths of decentralized power. Ethan Kennan. Hmm. Ethan Kennan asked an interesting question. I honestly don't think that they're going to run out of problems. Like, one thing I think Legend of Korra does understand is that, like, problems don't stop. You don't just fix things. Like, t t time has a way of uh, melding, 
away all safeguards eventually and eventually things fuck up and you gotta you know figure it out moses mm just have some interesting analysis i'm not going to comment too much on very valid alex firefly mentions how mako and bolin's uh, grandmother's uh, reverence to the earth queen is never challenged and i do think it would have been interesting to see how she responded to that okay Silurius mentions that he he dms a group of avatar legends which i'm gonna guess is, is an avatar rpg because they seem like they would like to make something like that and i helped him with this video which makes me happy same fella asked me to do one with the ab absolute monarchy of the fire nation i mean maybe if i have if i find i have enough interesting things to say about it i do really want to do uh some talking about um cora the like legend of cora and their very interesting relationship with police and fascism but i think i can mix it in with the video on homelessness dude with child name in a different language pointed out that the here illustrates something that uh, other anarchists have also come to understand which is that propaganda of the deed doesn't work and like i think it's a little bit more complicated than that but fair point no stripe 361 points out that if see here i had to hadn't assassinated the earth queen more than likely she would have started the next world war to try and take over republic city land and yeah like that is i think a fair assumption given that she was trying to get a secret airbending police force or a secret airbending military force like yeah that's probably what would have happened but i don't necessarily think that that is to say what would have stopped her uh, the issue is as long as she stays in her lane she's allowed to keep oppressing her people which is something Zaheer wouldn't find acceptable. Von Voon and Buddies had an interesting point that there's an argument that Zaheer serves as a cautionary tale how not to implement anarchism, but we weren't presented with an alternative, which made it seem as if anarchism itself is a problem. I mean, there's you can make the case that the airbenders are meant to be anarchism done right. I have a, a couple problems with that. And then there's some interesting comments uh, further in the discussion, which I like, which is pointing out that, like, you could say it doesn't work, but is is that really fair when it's not working because uh, other states feel threatened by the possibility of them succeeding and then invest their self self destructive energy into destroying them? Is that really saying it doesn't work? Like winning at game theory doesn't like is what works, but what works isn't always what's good. Like climate catastrophe works and it is not going to succeed like a lot a lot a lot of self-destructive behavior is optimal like think think on that for a second slightly Im embittered productions points out that one thing that's unfortunate about Sahir is that he's not given much character backstory and i agree i, I think that is an unfortunate thing but that's a larger problem with Korra more broadly i think like Cor Korra does not flesh out its characters like emo emotional space a way that is necessary it's it's way way focused on plot uh, mr medina recommended me to check out uh, k and skittle skittles they are lovely and great and i've liked every video of theirs i've seen skittles is be beautiful and i love him and k is all right too i did try intentionally not to focus on an authorial intent partially because i think that kind of shuts down people's brains on listening to criticism like it, it starts feeling like a personal attack when you start mentioning that kind of stuff. So I, I try to veer away from that. But I definitely think there is an argument there. Adrian Partier uh, suggests me checking out, making a video on Aang and Zuko's goals and perspective on the creation of Republic City. Eh, I probably should be reading like the comics and stuff for that, but I don't, I don't have money for that shit. <laughs> that is an interesting topic, though. Underscore made a good point, or articulated a good point, where like, you're allowed to ch challenge the legitimacy of the person sitting on the throne, but not the throne itself. I do think that the stuff with Prince Wu, oh, Wu is kind of an acknowledgement of the showrunners almost being embarrassed of, run of realizing that the first series is kind of a wholehearted endorsement of monarchy <laughs> by the end of it. The Lulip uh, pointed out that I said that the solution to the equal crisis involved no systemic change. And yeah, it, it did involve systemic change just systemic change that i don't think actually addressed the fundamental problems which is fair yeah one thing that's weird about the the bandits and their biplane is that like at this point i think all states have been captured except um this province and zaofu 
So it's also wondering, like, where are these bandits? Like, where physically are these bandits operating in that Kuvira doesn't, like, control? And another question is just, like, why are they prepared to, st like, steal food being airdropped in? Like, surely that's not, like, a common problem for them. Like, I don't even know if I can think of times in history where, like, air band banditry was, like, a problem. <laughs> But it's also just the fact that the air nomads have so much fewer resources than Kubira does. Hope Defiant made a point that the roving, roving bandits popping up on the death uh, could result could be a manifestation of how historically bandits after uh, come up after a central power collapses are often ex-soldiers who are suddenly out of work after their funding dried up. And I swear I saw a comment about this at some point, but I don't see it now. The little lip also makes a good point that there is evidence that like. He's not solely blamed. Like, some blame is leveled at, for example, um, Zafu. Anyways, I love all of you. Th thank you so much for sticking with me in this new thing I'm doing. I'm planning to try to get my video on either utilitarianism or homelessness out by next month. And then another comment response video, and then, like, try to keep that cycle going. But yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye!